I found a really stupid way to set up your steering wheel and the car in a set of course competition, which I personally found made it a lot easier to drive faster, control the vehicle and recover from mistakes. Now, this is really bad. This is stupid. Uh, this is probably not a good idea for you to, to use, but it works for me, so it might work for you. So that's, that's why I'm sharing it. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel. And uh, to demonstrate this, I'm on a server here, uh, Nürburgring noob friendly, and uh, we, we're going to show what we do whilst driving, because why not talk and drive? That's what I like to do. So uh, it's just going to finish from quali here, and then it's going to go to the race. I've not actually done a quali lap here. We've got 21 people in, in the server, and uh, actually we've got 1 minute 55, so I can do that here. So what I do is I set the wheel up to be absurdly sensitive. Now, because I'm I'm really lucky I'm using a, one of the Fanatec wheel rims, uh, I'm using the Fanatec podium, um, with the Fanatec wheels, you could just set your wheel rotation on the wheel rim, and you could just, on the fly, uh, change the, the rotation value. So, already, my game is set to 900 degrees, and I'm running my wheel at 420 degrees sensitivity. So, it's like running the steering lock at double sensitivity, uh, which is stupid <laughs> so that's 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 stupid and we've done that on the wheel uh, the, the advantage of doing it on the wheel rather than in the game um, with the car setup is that you can dial it in a bit quickly whilst you're driving but on in terms of the car setup what I like to do is uh, obviously make sure we've got enough fuel for the race it's a 15 minute race um, and I like to just make it feel even tighter by changing the steering rack where, where are we where are we? I'm going crazy here. There we go. The caster settings, I like to put that on 14. This is with the uh, the Audi. In my case, the Golden Saudi Audi. What this does with the caster setting is if the higher this value is, the more kind of uh, immediate the response the car will be to the steering input. The lower the caster, the more sluggish the car will feel and the, the, the less immediate the, the steering will be. Um, and then in terms of the actual steer ratio, um, I put that down to, to 14 on the car. <laughs> Even 30. I'm going to put it on 14. So we've made the car pretty uh, responsive in terms of steering ratio. We've made the front tyres responsive in terms of the, 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 caster, the, the caster angle. And um, yes, this, this is a totally ridiculous way to set up a vehicle. I'll please, please hope that's saved. I think it remembers it when it goes to the race. Um, but the result of doing this is you you can actually handle the yeah I say there we go fine you can actually manipulate the car more directly and you can still um drive smoothly with it typically the disadvantage of setting the steering to be too sensitive is that you lose the finer control uh, and smoothness of handling the vehicle and not accidentally throwing the car into corners but because these cars even with this uh, with the Audi um They've got traction control and ABS and everything, so they're pretty hard to lose control anyway, if, especially if you put up the ABS. But even with this Audi, if you put the TC on one, it's fine. And, and by having the caster set as it is and the response set as it is, if the back steps out at all, uh, the force feedback brings it back straight away. Um, so you're not sliding around ludicrously and you only have to do small inputs regardless to... to uh, to get it to do what you want to do, and it like it's, it's perfectly fine. Normally, if I was to do this in i racing or or a Seto or R Factor Two, um, this would generally make the cars pretty undrivable. But with ACC, um, this seems to work pretty well. Weirdly, the reason why I tried this out was because I used to have issues with R Factor One with certain cars, in that they just they would seem to just be um, just unresponsive to input or like just felt like a a, like a, a brick sledge <laughs> and I thought hang on a minute I'm getting a bit of this feeling from ACC so I'll give this silliness a go and it actually it worked pretty well uh, obviously I know some of you will be like oh but uh, you you know you can just move the steering wheel faster yourself and uh, yeah you can do you, you could do that um, to, to sort of achieve the similar goal but what I would say is because the, uh, the the one aspect of the force feedback that AC does now since about two or three months ago is um, oh Jesus let's not get a penalty too fast the one thing it does is you do get an initial suspension movement that lets you feel that the uh, car's loading up on one side or the other 
uh, you still don't really get much variation for understeer until until after you've gone over the limit in terms of force feedback. Um, there's not not much like preemptive seat of the pants. Well, there's basically no seat of the pants. FFB, let's get through there. Um, so I, I, I really find setting up the cars absurdly tight to input like this really helps negate the the lack of feel and make the most of the feel that is there. And I would say the one the one aspect of force feedback that ACC does really well. Uh, let's put TC to one. Is the the when you're losing the back of the car, that force feedback is actually done very well in ACC. And by setting the steering up super super tight and the caster really tight, that's pretty much you're magnifying that aspect of the force feedback and that that the immediacy of that force feedback on the wheel. Effectively, ironically, basically doing the exact opposite of what Stefano said in his video of oh set the caster to wider because it makes it. <laughs> gives you more of a, an arc for the steering to tell you more e detail. Do the opposite of what he says. It's actually better for those of you that actually uh, want to drive as best possible from the force feedback. Um, controversial, I know. And, and I do. I, I, I really like Harris. He's a really nice guy. So I'm not, I'm not having a go at him as a guy. But uh, I think his tips, his, his tips, some of his tips are stupid. But he's a great guy. <laughs> Harris... You can, you can shout at me in the comments section. There's no Sim Racing Expo this year, so he can't strangle me, so, so I'm safe. <laughs> All right, listen, I, I have made it a bit too sensitive, I've just realised. There, there is a limit to this. I've gone a bit overboard. I probably, uh, probably didn't need to move the steering rack as far as we did. So let's. Uh, I'm just going to change my wheel sensitivity here. Um, I'm going to move it up to... Right, perfect. So now we're after lap one on this public server. Obviously, people uh, can't drive on this public server. Server is called like noob friendly. Uh, we are in third place, and uh, we're left with the guys at front that seem to be able to drive a bit better. So let's try and close the gap on them. Now the th the thing is, with uh, any car that has a lot of traction control or race series where you're using traction control um, you obviously if the traction control is kicking in you tend to lose a lot of time so by having faster steering assuming you're comfortable with not moving your hands so much um, it means if you when you go into traction control or the back steps out at all it's a lot easier to just recover it quicker and not get stuck in that bogged down uh, traction control uh, slop and like there's another thing I found with with ACC especially compared to the original Assetto Corsa is that um, when you when I was driving it with normal settings like 900 degrees rotation uh, 15 steering lock and a normal caster um, I would find that the cars would get stuck in a bit of oversteer and it'd be like oh it's it'd be like oh why is it getting stuck like, I can't bring it out of it quickly Whereas when I, when I play AC, a lot of the R Factor 2 cars and uh, Automobilista, they have, they have different handling to them and different nature to them. But it always felt like oh, I could, regardless of the steering rotation, I could always pull it out of the uh, the slide or, or even hold it in specific angles a lot easier than ACC. Uh, but by doing this absurd s steering sensitivity, I find it allows me to get a degree of that control back with ACC that I, that I felt was missing. Um, also, it helps negate the nature of the cars of being a bit... Um, they don't feel the most agile and nimble of cars in ACC, even compared to, like, you drive GT3 cars in Race Room, uh, in, in AC1, in, in R Factor 2... Uh, they, they just feel way more nimble. They've, they've got a, a less a, initial grip, uh, which may or may not be realistic. I'm not, I'm not saying what's more or less realistic and you know, what's better or worse necessarily. I'm just saying that those are the differences between the simulators. The AC, the cars are way more planted. Um, and so I think uh, that, that's also why this has such a big effect. And uh, 
why um, making the steering tighter sort of gives you more of that immediate control. Although you would actually think it, it should be the opposite, really. I mean, if tyres are more grippy and more peaky, you would expect the cars to be more responsive innately. It's, it's like the cars are tighter and grippier, but also less responsive. In, in, you know, I really, I do have a lot of enjoyment playing ACC. I really enjoy racing it with subscribers. Oh, guys, nice car behind us here. I really enjoy uh, large grids. I, it looks fantastic as long as you've got a fast PC. There's loads of positives AC. Sound is amazing. Um, you know, but I, I, I don't get on with as some aspects of the handling and, and uh, the force feedback. As you guys know, I'm not going to keep going on about it in this video. But for my personal enjoyment, this little setup shenanigans, <laughs> absurd setup shenanigans, has really um, just made it way, way, way more enjoyable for me and um, allowed me to race um, much more competitively when, when we've done our races or when I just joined servers. It's just made it way, way easier to drive. And, um, you know, I, th I think with a lot of simulators, every different simulator you play, they're all slightly different. You can't apply the same logic to them. And at the end of the day, <laughs> he said it, at the end of the day, at a basic level, <laughs> fundamentally, um, it's up to you as a player to find the fun way to play each simulator, you know? It's like, they are what they are. You can bang your head uh, on forums against your keyboard and hope that the developer maybe agrees with you and maybe implements something that they might have forgot and that they think it's a good idea or they've got time to put in the game. You can do that. You can be an idiot that wastes your life making YouTube videos on a ridiculous niche hobby. Um, <laughs> you can do that as well. But ultimately, you know, developers are so busy just trying to get the basic games to like just to get just to get stuff to operate and function to something that can be sold is really, really hard and a lot of work. So you know, they they're not going to be like. It's not like a developer's like doesn't know what's going on themselves. <laughs> As someone that's done game development, like the amount of times that people would come up to me and be like, "Oh, have you thought of this with your game?" or "Have you thought of making this? Have you thought of doing this?" It's like, yeah, yeah, we have thought of doing this. Um, we don't. We just don't have enough time. <laughs> so, you know. Um, Ultimately, you have to, you, it's up to you to look at what, when something's come out in its current state, to find what's enjoyable about it, that, or that you can enjoy, and then focus on that aspect. You notice how we went totally off-road there. What a pump by that guy. And uh, we were fine. Like, the car was totally fine over the grass. Force feedback corrected it. Um, really, really... Uh, nice and easy and I, I think I'd have been soaring away like a lumberjack on cocaine if I, if I didn't have the uh, steering so tight look at this guy right behind us he's giving us a bit of pressure it's nice do you know what An another aspect that Kunos have absolutely nailed with this is uh, the car contacts in multiplayer about again two or three months ago they really uh, they updated it and made it so that you can actually knock doors and stuff and the cars don't go flying off uh, which is pretty crucial with something like GT3 racing because uh, th there's not that much speed difference between the vehicles especially when you're if you're racing against someone that's at track pace or within half a second of track pace there's it's very hard to get overtaking moments other than pretty uh, aggressive lunges so you need it that you can have a bit of car contact without anything ludicrous happening so that you know that's fantastic nice pass in the Ferrari there really good overtake who's that S rats Appreciate that. Really nice move there. Textbook overtake. That's a hard corner to defend on, you know. If you defend on the inside, you're too slow. Um, but you will block it, and potentially car going around the outside, will uh, they'll run wide. But if you stay on the outside, they can kind of nip up the inside and get you, get you that way. I think the best way to defend that corner is to actually keep your car in the middle of the track. You have to practice that. Didn't pull away. I need to. I've got to focus here. Five minutes. <laughs> Still in third place. Third, third out of 19 on a public server. Should be winning this, but. 
Go, go, go. So the whole wheel rotation thing as well, um, as I say, I always found with the lower end wheels, bef before I was like a spoiled idiot YouTuber with this amazing SimLab cockpit and uh, Fanatec DD and, and other DD wheels and low tail pedals and stuff. Uh, you know, I, I had like a Momo black steering wheel, a G25, which is the same as a G29. I would, with those wheels, I would often actually set them up to be artificially sensitive um, because when you've got a wheel that has weaker force feedback, um, the, the wheels can't stay in sync with the simulator at wider slip angles or what, you know, where, where a car would be wider correcting, whereas the DD wheel actually can do normally. Um, and I would find with those wheels that would often help. So, so with like rally games, for example, I would also set them up to be artificially uh, overly sensitive. It allows you to correct the car quicker and uh, makes, up, makes up for the lack of uh, innate speed in the wheel. I, as I say, with most, if you're playing with a direct drive wheel with a lot of simulators, um, you can literally in many instances just let go of the wheel and it will, um, the wheel rotates so quickly, it just stays with the sim and it will, even if you have a really loose steering, it will, it's fast enough to correct the car. Like you'll notice in real world drifting videos, <laughs> they're having a nice battle here, all swearing in chat, censor that guys. <laughs> Uh, you watch real world drifting videos and you'll see the wheels rotating so fast, it's ridiculous. Oh, we've got a bit of a battle on our hands here, guys. Let's see if we, let's see if we can win this. Look at that. It's weaving like a grandma that's uh, had too many cups of coffee. Oh! That was, that was uh, ambitious of me, but he, he... He turned in on me. I mean, it was too ambitious of me. He should have known I was... He, I think he turned in on purpose there. Bugger. <laughs> it's all right, though. We use the uh, abs absurd <laughs> steering lock to not do that dull, slow rotation round on that corner, which you'll be very familiar with if you've ever lost your car there. We'll close the gap. This battle's not over. I, I'll give Jay, Jay Davis the benefit of the doubt there. I think it was, you know, it was a bit of a lunge by me. It's, uh, I think if you're on the car behind and you're... Oh, we weren't understeering, though. I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments. Court of muscle. I'd say racing incident. I'm, I'm the one that lost out, not him, so it doesn't matter. We'll get him. We'll get him back. <laughs> Steering lock hack. Inbound. Come on. You might have noticed, if you're not familiar with the car I'm driving, it, this is the known as the Saudi Audi. It's basically exactly like any any normal Audi, but we've, we've uh, it's gold uh, coated, not even paint. It's actually gold leaf, which adds another 30 kilograms to the vehicle's weight. But it does mean that we can actually drive across uh, sand traps perfectly fine. And uh, at the end of this race, I'll show you, uh, it's capable of doing full, full on drifting. Uh, courtesy of the uh, steering input <laughs> and uh, setup hacks. A everything else with this setup, by the way, is purely um, the default aggressive setup. I have missed the brake points. Um, so, yeah, and that, actually, that's another really good thing with ACC. The default aggressive setup is uh, pretty competitive. Uh, you know, we've got some really fast drivers when we do our live streams and uh, they often just use the default aggressive setup. Maybe, maybe they, they, they tweak the tyre pressure and stuff, but the fact is you should be able to get within a second or so of the really fast times with the d default aggressive setup. So it's nice in ACC that there isn't so much total setup shenanigans that you get with some, some sims. And nice that the default aggressive actually works well on the on the different tracks and everything. At least that's been my experience. Come on, I'm going to get this throw back. Oh, we've run out of time. This is the final lap. Ah, uh, if we hadn't have had that knock, we would have we would have been up for the fight here. I think we can. We might be able to get on his tail. 
Surprisingly, these GT3 cars don't have that much uh, draft on them. Which is a shame, because I think if they did have a bit more draft, it would uh, make the racing a little bit better, because it'd be easier to then get an overtake from a distance. But, uh, it'd be what it'd be. I'm, I'm hyped, actually, for the GT4 cars. I think GT4 with ACC will actually be a lot more... <laughs> A lot more interesting for, for your average race. I pushed it a bit too hard over the NGK there. I had to, I had to go for it. But you see, we, we were just like driving terrible there. I'm talking and driving, not trying my hardest. And, uh, you know, we just lumbered our way into third place. And we, we probably would have caught up with this guy if it was a longer race. Um, I've been doing this with this setup for quite a few races now. And as I say, for me, it's, it's made ACC like literally like two times easier so now I'm just going to turn the traction control off here um, I, I mean look at this right I could not do this kind of drifting without these absurd settings you know, you're not really meant to be you're not really meant to be drifting uh, GT3 cars uh, you know it's not optimal but um, all race cars, if you know how to control it, generally you should be able to do this with, with even racing tyres. You'll notice, uh, like, even Formula One car drivers at, drift it, like, using the mechanic, just from mechanical grip of the tyres, uh, drifting out of pit lanes and stuff on the power, power sliding out of corners and stuff. Um, a lot of driving sims mess it up, but I would, I, I can't do these kind of slides and control it with the lower steering locks in, in ACC because I, I think it's a mixture of just the nature of the handling but also the um, I find the, the force feedback and there's maybe a little bit of steering, maybe there's a little bit of input delay with ACC compared to other sims but by doing the steering sensitivity up like this it seems to compensate for that <laughs> Can you imagine if you make a mistake in a race, being able to catch the car from a ludicrous slide means that you've not binned the race. I mean, look, my tyres are... I could literally cook a four-course English dinner for 14 people on these wheels, and this is still... You know, this is not... That's not going to be ideal for lap times or anything, but I could still fully catch the car and do whatever I wanted with it. And, and be in control of the car, which, which personally, I always feel like I should, unless a, unless I've broken something on the car or it's wet and there's wet patches, there's random stuff going on, or you know, I should always feel in control of the car. I should always be in control of the car. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, hopefully those. Uh, hope, maybe try try this out. See if it fixes things for you. Um, I, I personally, I would love uh, Kunos to actually make the force feedback not terrible. <laughs> oh, that's subjective. You're wrong. Well, maybe I am wrong, but uh, go and play AC. Go and play R Factor 2, then go to ACC and uh, with a direct drive wheel or with a well set up with CSL Elite or something. And uh, d don't tell me that the, the lack of force feedback isn't depressing. D just tell me, guys. <laughs> and now, now we get hundreds of comments of people going, oh, you've just set your wheel up wrong. No, I've played ACC on like 15 different sim rigs, uh, other people's rigs, my rigs. I've set up force feedback for real drivers and other... Yeah, I know what I'm doing with force feedback. ACC's force feedback is just... It's just uh, not, not as good as AC, R Factor 2, R3E, uh, in terms of telling you what the car's doing. But anyway... Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this. Uh, if you if you enjoyed it, subscribe, hit the like button, all that business. Uh, disagree with me? Shout at me in the comments. Everyone always does. And uh, it, but until the next one, guys. Uh, I, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing you uh, soon. Happy tea drinking and uh, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>